A considerable portion of individuals that dislike The Last Jedi are racist and sexist. Some harass people involved with the making of the movie, some say over-the-top things about ruining Star Wars, some of them just don't like the movie because there are characters of color in prominent positions, or women who do things beyond what Leia did in the first trilogy. All of these are reprehensible, but they are also a very vocal minority, one which has incorrectly painted the only possible feminist or non-racist opinion of The Last Jedi as being positive. You either like The Last Jedi, or you're not a feminist. Thus, a lot of really good criticism of racism and sexism in The Last Jedi goes into the proverbial garbage can of self-proclaimed progressive fans. As a disclaimer, I enjoyed The Last Jedi and do not think the film was overall racist. I only wanted to point out a few things I noticed, which were probably included unintentionally, and I'm not angry with anyone involved with this film. They all did a great job making a fun movie, but I'd still like to point out some problems. Let me start off with something I noticed myself. One criticism that I have seen lodged against the movie, which I find poor by itself, is that the plot line to find the master codebreaker is pointless because it ends in failure. Generally, I think failure can be a good thing in movies, as it allows characters to grow and can keep tensions from feeling perpetually surmountable. However, this is the only major plot line to fail in the entire movie. It is also the one carried out by Finn, Rose, and Poe. The three characters of color try to do something heroic, but instead only caused more trouble for the people they were trying to save. Meanwhile, Holdo's plan works perfectly, save the mutiny from Poe. Rey successfully finds Luke, convinces him to help in a roundabout way, helps defeat Snoke, and rescues the entirety of the Resistance. Luke ultimately saves everyone, and even Kylo Ren manages to succeed in three out of his four plans. And he's the villain. The subtext present in this film suggests that, in Brian Johnson's Star Wars, White characters are successful, and characters of color may try, but ultimately need rescuing by their white allies. This is common in many biopics and dramas, where even if the movie is about a black character from real life history, it takes a white person to stand up and show them the way. Fortunately, pre-Disney Star Wars avoided a lot of this. Lando blows up the second Death Star without Wedge having to save his life, Mace Windu gets his big hero moment in Attack of the Clones, and even though Kyle has to save Jan in each of their games, she has to save his skin even more often. But the characters of color in The Last Jedi need their white heroes. Holdo, a character who I enjoyed, and especially enjoyed Laura Dern's performance of, unfortunately, especially performs this role of the white savior, complete with the moment for Poe to go, oh, how wrong was I, as she nobly sacrifices herself. Never mind the fact that Poe exhibited a willingness to sacrifice himself for others earlier in this movie, so that was not the lesson he needed to learn. No, the movie seems to wish to inform him that he needs to respect authority, and follow orders without question or context. The intentional subtext is that he needs to respect women in authority, which isn't a bad message by itself. However, nothing exists in a vacuum. I'm not alone in this observation. Poe has been described as embodying toxic masculinity, which is a fair criticism of the movie character presented to us and this movie as being staunchly feminist. Having toxic masculinity cause problems in a film is good, and not even new to Star Wars. Problems arise in the prequel trilogy due almost entirely to weak self-serving politicians and toxically masculine views on love. To some extent, perhaps Poe wouldn't have gone behind a male commander's back, and even if the message is muddled by saying Holdo wanted to save the Resistance more than being the hero, which is the same thing Poe did, and by her risking the lives of everyone in the Resistance, women in positions of power do face unbelievable discrimination from male subordinates. So why'd it have to be Poe? Star Wars fans have a complicated relationship with their first Latino lead. Assuming we're not counting Bail Organa, of course. While The Force Awakens introduced a fun pilot character that worked as a leader and an inspiration to his friends, fandom took the lacking aspects of his character and filled them in with whatever they could. Charles Soule's Star Wars Poe Dameron comics elaborated on Poe as a leader, and it was well received. He was humble, but funny, and equally likable. More egregiously, some fans relied on Latino stereotypes. His bravery became hot-headedness, his wisecracking became disrespect, his handsomeness became desirability. Ryan Johnson seems to have relied on some of these as well. 
I want to stress that I'm not complaining that The Last Jedi betrayed the comics. I recognize the film started filming before the books came to the shelves, and obviously Star Wars movies have always been more canon than anything released on print. The problem is not the discrepancy anyways. The discrepancy highlights the problem. The only Latino man in The Last Jedi is disrespectful to women, hot-headed, irresponsible, and only controlled by violence. For feminism. And since his disrespect and reception of violence is with white women, it sends the message, intentional or not, that Latino men seek to undermine the success of white women. I don't believe that Ryan Johnson intentionally did this, but I do think that it's potential that some stereotypes held within his head made their way into the movie. Poe isn't the only man of color that is treated violently in this film. Finn is subject to two or three assaults by new love interest Rose. At the start of the film, Finn is trying to abandon ship so that Rey won't come back to a death trap. Obviously, we can't have Finn leave the ship. I mean, without getting the information about how he can find someone to break the code. What's important is that Finn wants to leave, but the narrative needs him to stay. Rose needs to be introduced as well. This scene, as a concept, should be really good. It works to kill two plot birds with one stone and it provides the basis for the relationship between two important characters for the rest of the film. Really, as long as this scene is handled respectfully and the following scenes maintain the same or evolving characterization, this can't go wrong. Instead, Rose tases Finn for trying to leave the Raddus. Her action, at least in the theater I was in, garnered a big laugh from the audience. Unfortunately, slapstick isn't always innocent. As I first saw elaborated on by Tumblr user LJ Wrights, this relies on the old trope of men being hurt for comedy. Only, as she puts it, quote, it's particularly toxic when it intersects with racism against men of color, end quote. Finn is a smart and rational person, and is not violent outside of battle with the First Order, even refusing to fire his weapon on Jakku. The tasing, which is meant to be comic, ignores all of these things. I believe we have a case of double racism, double sexism on display with this scene. Twice sexist is a scene that implies violence against men is funny, and implies that women need to use violence to solve their problems with men. Twice racist is a scene that shows Asian women as violent and reactionary, and draws the inference that black men are unable to be reasoned with or spoken out of action. This scene could have been genuinely great. Finn tries to sneak off, but Rose won't let him. She says her piece about loyalty, and he says his piece about wanting to save Ray. Then she can say that he'll have to go through her. He begrudgingly accepts her stance and goes to speak with Poe about alternatives. Instead, we receive something that will make any growing friendship much harder to understand, and relies, again, on most likely unintentional stereotypes. Rose later rams her skimmer into Finn's when he is trying to sacrifice himself to save the Resistance. Ignoring that this is again an action of violence, one which could plausibly kill both Finn and Rose, I understand that she is trying to save his life, even if the script doesn't make it seem logical. This scene happens because something something save what we love, and then they kiss. Well, rather, Rose kisses Finn. There's no indication that he's into it. I guess payback for Empire Strikes Back. Man, is there any romantic relationship in these films that doesn't have physical violence or unwanted kissing? Oh, okay. Good for you two. Rosa is an unfortunate opportunity for the first leading woman of color in a Star Wars film. Aside from the two aforementioned scenes, I do like her character in theory. Someone from the working class, disillusioned with luxury, but still astounded by heroes. A welcome change from the categories of poor desert dweller, monk, royal, veteran, and criminal. I want to stress that there is definitely a considerable amount of hatred for Rose because she is not white and not a man. I also want to stress that anyone that dislikes Rose and then harasses Kelly Marie Tran is reprehensible and undeserving to call themselves a Star Wars fan. The last thing I want to talk about in detail is the problem with Kylo Ren. I've seen many people call him sympathetic. He works as a villain. That's it. The Last Jedi plays with the broken child themes, but it does so in a very misguided way. First of all, Kylo Ren was an adult when Luke ignited his lightsaber in his presence. Also, his response was to kill everyone else at the Jedi Temple, and he commits multiple genocides. He's not a child, he's a man. Men need to be held responsible for their actions, and mass murderers are not sympathetic. This is admittedly more at the fault of the fanbase than the movie, 
but it needs to be said. When white men commit crimes, they do not need to be infantilized or treated like they are children who have been misguided or mistreated. They are responsible for what they have committed. Finally, a quick list off of minor points throughout the film that warrant a bit of a critique. Leia refers to BB-8 as the droid. If she knows his name, she should say it. Droids are treated like property, but that doesn't mean they have to be considered such. Poe makes a joke about Hux's mother, but she isn't here. And if it weren't for mothers, he wouldn't be here. So just remember, when you put down one mother, you put down them all. Lactation is a normal mammalian function that doesn't need to be played for laughs. Poe's mutiny is primarily comprised of people of color, white women, aliens, and droids. The minorities are the ones that are untrustworthy and should submit to white authority in this movie. Hyena horse lives are prioritized over slave children lives. Ray's trying to save a man that nearly murdered her friend, did murder her mentor, and insists on being evil. I know Kylo is trying to be manipulative, but Ray isn't nobody to Finn, Han, Chewie, and BB-8. 3PO is roped into the mutiny against his will, and this is played for laughs. And if you ship Ray with Kylo Ren, you'll get yours someday. <laughs>